Hey folks, in this short video, we're gonna look at right triangle trigonometry problems involving bearing. What bearing is, is it's kind of a, a method of, of, of finding a direction or describing a direction that's used often in sailing. And so what a bearing is, it's a direction from one place to another measured in degrees of an angle with respect to the north-south line. And here's what I mean by that. A bearing, a direction given as a bearing, we'll look in this form like north 26 degrees west or south 85 degrees west or north 4 degrees east. And so let's model and see what those look like on kind of a, a north, south, east, west plane. Now, if I said north 26 degrees west, that means we're going 26 degrees west off of the north south line. So for that very first one, that would be if this were a 26 degree angle. That's that's kind of this first example over here, okay? And then for our second example, I'll kind of do it in green, south 85 degrees west. So that means that south, I'm going 85 degrees west of south. So that would be almost like this, okay? That means this is our 85 degree angle, 85 degrees west of due south. And for this third example, north four degrees east. So we went north 26 degrees west. So north four degrees east is pretty close where that angle right there is four degrees. This would be example three. So once we know how to read and interpret these bearings, we can actually solve some math problems involving those bearings. And so here's our example. It says a sailboat departed from dock and traveled west for two nautical miles per hour for three hours. Then they turned and traveled, oh, and there's our bearing, south 25 degrees west for two more hours, and they kept the same speed. Find the distance between the sailboat and the original dock where they started, and find the sailboat's bearing to the dock at the end of the trip. So we got two parts. We're going to find the distance, and then once we're done, we're going to find the bearing. But our first thing we got to do is let's illustrate what this looks like. Let's, let's map the path of the ship. So they start off, they're traveling two nautical miles per hour for three hours and they're traveling west there, right? So I'm going to pick kind of some random point over here and I'm going to travel west and if it's two nautical miles per hour for three for three hours, that means that's six nautical miles, right? And I like to position this, you know, you might say, hey, why didn't you start at the origin? It's easier for me if I, if I start it somewhere off the origin so that whenever it makes its turn with the bearing, that happens at the origin. So after it travels west for three hours, boom, then we're going to change direction due to this bearing. And I like for that change of direction to be right here at the origin. It just helps me visualize it. You don't have to do it that way. But south 25 degrees west. Well, we, we know from the previous slide that south 25 degrees west would be like that. Well, there's a 25 degree angle. And then it says it does that for two more hours at the same speed, okay? For two more hours at the same speed, that means this is four. So this actually should be a little bit shorter, okay? And what we're gonna try to figure out is the distance, which is that distance right there. And then we're gonna try to figure out the bearing. So I'm gonna copy our triangle over to the left off the coordinate plane um, so that you can see it a little bit clearer. Okay, and, and now we've got our um, triangle kind of copied over here. Here's kind of our situation. You can see I copied over here so we can see it a little bit better. And let's start to do our math. And so the first thing I'm going to do before we worry about the bearing from where the sailboat ended back to where it started, let's figure out this distance right here. And currently, uh, depending on the tools you have, if you know of something called the law of cosines and you have a handy little tool for finding that distance, but I'm going to teach this video as if we don't know the law of cosines right now. And so what I'm thinking is this. I, I don't have a right triangle, but if I kind of extend this out thusly, we've got a right triangle right there. And then we know that this 25 degree angle would be supplementary with this angle right here, which would be 65. And so then I can use some right triangle trig to find this measure and this measure. And, and to tell you kind of big picture what I'm thinking about is if I know this is six and we can use trig to find this and we can use trig to find this, then this distance right here is just the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And we can use our Pythagorean theorem to find that distance. So I'm just gonna call this X and this, actually, I'll, yeah, I'll call that X and that Y. And so what we know first is let's find y. So the sine of 65 equals y over 4. And that means if you were to multiply both sides by 4, 4 times the sine of 65 equals y. 
and I believe that is going to be 3.62. And so this distance right here is going to be 3.62. I just did some right triangle trig right there. Now, we can say the cosine of 65 equals x over 4. So I just said the cosine of this angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and we'll solve for that. So if I multiply by 4 on both sides, 4 times the cosine of 65 equals x, and our x there is equal to about, and I'm rounding, 1.69. So this right here, oops, right here is 1.69. So now we have all the tools that we need to use our Pythagorean theorem. So if I have 6 and 1.69, that means that this entire side length is 7.69. So if I do my Pythagorean theorem, we know that a squared plus b squared, was that 6, 2 squared, equals c squared. And just doing some math, I'm just actually copying it down. I did all this math earlier. And then we take the square root of both sides. D is going to be about 8.5. So our distance here, right here, is 8.5. So if we wanted to know the distance, we've answered that question. The, the total distance from where they started, they're about 8.5 nautical miles away. Now our next question says, find the sailboat's bearing to the dock at the end of the trip. Okay? So... I'll do this part in green and we'll kind of work this part out down here. This is where we'll find the bearing, okay? Now, what I know is in my little right triangle here, okay, I'm gonna find some angles. I'm gonna find some angles. And so if I'm looking at this, I don't really at this point care about any of this information in here. So I'm just gonna kind of erase it. Because what we know, if, if my little boat's here and I'm not gonna draw a picture of a boat, but we know he's right there. The bearing is the angle off of the north-south line. So it's going to be, it's, it's going to be north something degrees east. We know that's what our bearing is going to be because it's the bearing from the boat back to the dock where it started. And so it's going to be north something degrees east and we need to find this angle right here. Well, we have tools for doing that. We have an uh, inverse trig. So if I just call this angle right here, if I call it theta, we know the opposite side in my right triangle, and we know the adjacent side in my right triangle. So I know that tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. And therefore, tan inverse of opposite over adjacent, the calculator is going to spit out our angle, which is roughly 64.79 degrees. That means that our bearing is going to be north 64.79 degrees east. So the, the kind of the moral of the story with these type of questions is, is whenever you draw your diagram, first you gotta draw it accurately, but then it might not be a straight up right triangle, but you can force it and kind of make it a right triangle. Remember how we extended the side of this and kind of turned it into a right triangle, and then we were able to use our right triangle tools for this sort of problem.